Hello, I'm Andy, and today I want to share a pretty nice build order which features the Spanish Soldados and the Spanish Haciendas. I think it's a lot of fun and it's quite greedy and quite powerful on, on that. In this game, I'm playing against China, and yeah, so just from the feeling, China is usually a pretty powerful mid to late game civilization. It's one of the meta picks, so it's pretty potent especially in the age 3 once they get there and get all their free generation stuff going um, their economy is always decent and yeah, just quite a powerful civilization and quite a powerful civilization in mid to late game and with the Spanish build order you can easily compete against that so let's get into it how it works out so basically you go up with 60 villagers you want to get a trading post um, in this game, I didn't really find the trading post early, so I built a house, um, but then I found here a 60 wood treasure and I could easily chop the rest of the wood. Um, otherwise, I would have gotten the trading post in transition, um, but normally I just send my guy immediately to the trading route to the nearest and build it immediately. So. That's just, I think, the best way to do it at the moment. And yeah. Other than that, I start with three settlers and capitalism in H1. I go up with 16 villagers. I queue three villagers. And I usually put in five to six villagers in coin, depending on the treasures I got. Um, I age up with the 200 coin, the outpost wagon. And yeah, this is just to keep me safe. In this game, I didn't really scout much. I was honestly assuming he would he would just attack me or he would just go FF and do some Chinese nonsense push. Um, but it's still always great to be safe. And so I usually just put my outpost in my base because Chinese are also capable of doing some aggression. And now let's slow down a bit. Um, I didn't scout it, but now I... Now he's attacking, he's using his small force here basically, the step riders, um, to be annoying and I'm really glad I have my tower here. I'm um, really with the tower and the outpost, you should be able to defend most pushes until you get to third age. And yeah, you probably also need to focus fire a bit. He has a lot of siege damage, I think he sent... No, he... I know he trained. I, I think he trained another batch, so it's fine, really. Ah, so he didn't send another card. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, again, in H2, to go back to the build order, you typically go for 5 settlers into 700 co wood. If I scouted his aggression, I could have also just gone into 7 rods. But usually it's not necessary. I just keep the 7 rods in the deck um, because it's also a decent H3 card, so I don't mind it having in my deck. Yeah, so you should be able to defend most stuff with, with Militia, your Explorer and your Tower. In this case, with the 700 wood I decided to build some houses and repair the outpost, so it's a bit easier uh, to defend basically. And yeah, usually you sh should be able to get around 10 rods up or like shortly after you age up you have 10 rods up if you're not disturbed and if your macro is good and after that you go into skirmishes. Um, yeah. So yeah, but for defending pushes like this um, it's important to to keep your explorer alive because the War dogs are quite potent and we really want them. Sadly I didn't have many villagers out so I could have or I should have moved them out. And then once your shipment pops, like the Lancers are just so good, you should just go engage and the Lancers are just such a good unit that even though he basically has a lot of counters to them, they're still good enough to clean it up, especially with the help of skirmishers. And it's enough to defend it. Maybe for the edge up, I also went for a greedy edge up with the one town center. 
so that means my economy will always be good. And um, if I'm left untouched, I just start with the Spanish gold and go into the 1000 wood. In this game, of, of course, I can't afford it because yeah, I'm being pressured a lot. So I better be safe and send another wave of Lancers, which proves to be a pretty good decision. And yeah, so focus fire the, the pikes. Once the Lancers come out, they should just be able to clean up everything, even, even if he has a lot of pikemen. Um, because the Chinese pikemen are pretty shit and the Lancers generally deal with infantry really well. So, yeah, that was basically what happened. Also, what you should also do, what I didn't really do in this game, is you should put a little bit of focus into herding your stuff. You should usually be able to put three herds under your TC. I really was... It wa was really sloppy for me, to be honest. So... That could have put me in a lot more trouble if he went like here and attacked those villagers and stuff. Um, so that would have also been a better decision, I guess. Yeah, other than that, with two TZs, you have quite a good boom going on. So you're not really pressured, especially after I defended this push. I think usually this game is pretty over at this point, but... I still, it still goes on a bit because I didn't want to take any risks, um, and I just want to, uh, did, yeah, didn't take any risks and play it out and push my advantage. So I wasn't sure if he was staying in H2, but considering he went back with his units, um, I assumed he was going for an FF, so, or not for an FF, but for a fortress H play. Um, that's why I could use my unit advantage to clean up a bit of stuff in the middle of the map. Um, but I didn't really want to commit um, because it can be quite dangerous against Chinese once they hit H3 with their Arquebusiers. Um, it can be pretty good, I guess. Yeah. So then I want to talk about the Marvelous Year card. Um, I usually send this card if I'm over 30 villagers. And this really this gives this gives your boom so much power. Um, you're, you're getting a crazy amount of resources with this card. So this card increases the gather rate of your villagers by 20% I think. So all resources and also the train rate of your villagers. And you have two TCs and 30 villagers so that's quite good. Um, I did a video on it. I would have to check my XL. I think you get around 3000. 3,000 resources or something with that amount of villagers. Um, you can check it out. Um, it's still on YouTube, so you can look it up. And yeah, and you also, of course, after the the period ends, you will also end up with more villagers. So this is basically a boom card. And yeah, other than that, I, because I sent I sent this card. Um, I'm just you know keeping my army safe getting some units and waiting for my Falconets and then I, I will go for the push and with the Falconets I'm hopefully able to finish the game like looking at the stuff I probably could have finished it but as I said when you are so far so far ahead it's sometimes it's good to to go for more game ending damage but I went for so much economy that I didn't feel like I had to so I'm just taking here this windmill I could have um, taken these trading posts and yeah, just get some walls up so I don't get killed by some raids or stuff. Get some map control going. And once my once my thing here arrives, my two fags, I do have a decent, decently sized army. So this is like the average army which I usually have with Spanish. Um, I also got my explorer just so I can get more dogs. And yeah, so basically rods to counter calf. I think I have a bit too many lancers. I could maybe I've overdone it a bit. Um, we will see soon because China is often making a lot of calf, and calf really counters lancers and also like the cavalry he has counters three of the four units I have, and I only have a few rodilleros um, to deal with. The cap basically, so 
Not the best unit composition. I should have focused more on Rodolaris to be honest. Um, yeah, but I'm still getting some dogs and I'm waiting for him to engage. In the meantime, I also try to yeah, get all the hunts here. Yeah, my economy is not the best balanced, so I really should have sent these. Let me finish this point before this fight starts. So I should have really um, switched those guys earlier here and get the hunts. So that would have helped me. Yeah, and also a lot of idle villagers here. You have to see I have 56 villagers at 60 minutes, which is quite a lot. So I tend to have a lot of idle villagers. But let's get back into the fight. So this is a very, very bad start to the fight for me. Um, his artillery is jumping right on my... His cavalry is jumping right on my artillery. Luckily my rods can go in and he isn't really clicking them down. So I shouldn't have been able to keep them alive this long um, but you can see th the Lancers basically all died to the calf here and yeah because if, if some more Lancers would be alive this army would be toast um, so yeah but at this point I'm still feeling decent I got a bit of damage done I cleaned this up his army generally I think I tried it a bit better could have tried it better um, but I didn't want to fight under a blockhouse, under a town center, you know, they can always pop up some stuff. Which he's already sending, some Chengadegos. So, it's always easy to lose your army under a Chinese CC. And that's why I wanted to just go there and take down the village. But he really isn't letting me. So maybe I should have just gone back the normal road. Also some skirmishers going in here. And yeah, basically I think at this point I should have sent the Haciendas. I don't think the calf combat is the right choice in hindsight. Uh, because I basically don't have any calf anymore. So yeah, two Haciendas and I have a lot of idols all the time anyway. You see like these <laughs> 34 villagers just going, always wander wandering through the map because I don't have map control or Basically because they are, they are gathering so fast the stuff that I feel like they are spending yet their time walking and instead of gathering which is not something I particularly like. Um, but yeah. So... Was not the best micro here. I think I should have... There's a lot of idols still going on here. I also got my tower up here. So as I think, I, I think I should have gotten the Hacienda a bit earlier and just put them to work. And you will see soon why, why this is a good um, good decision. Even if I'm not as far ahead as I am right now. Some fights going on here. He still has a lot of calf. Like I said, the Chinese calf is very powerful. Luckily I have, I have the rods. I think I kind of learned. I guess I didn't. Yeah, I mean, I send in 9 rods, so this is a decent army, in either case. So yeah, what is the game plan for me now? Um, I'm sending, I'm building the Haciendas, and I'm sending a lot of villagers on them and get Soldados. And the Soldados are two pop Musketeers, which also Shadow Tech. And that makes them for very powerful units. So what he's doing here, he's sending out his villagers, and all my rods basically attacked the villagers, so that was well played from him. He also had a batch of Manchus, which I don't think... Probably if he had Iron Iron Troops, let me see. Yeah, I think Iron Troops would have been the better choice. Um, but I, I guess Manchus are also decent. So he's cleaning up me again. I have to go back here with all my villagers so basically that means I lost the map control for my forward hunting and stuff so I really should abandon that soon but that isn't the problem because as I said I'm training soldados now and with the house of Justamara I sent like 10 cards in H3 and that means like I can age up very cheaply in to H4 and aging up to H4 means my 
Soldados also get a shadow tech, so they are basically industrial age Soldados. So not only I'm getting strong musketeers, um, they also get shadow tech. I'm not reliant on on hunts and stuff anymore and on mines. Like you, you can see him here, he's running out of resources together. He's He has to fight for this here basically. And I'm soon also would run out, so this is basically my last hunt. This is my last mine, so I would need to transition to Haciendas anyway. And now we see soon we see the last fight. So what I often also do now is I'm sent him unction, so probably instead of calf combat, I would have sent him unction and train some missionaries because these really help make you even stronger. And yeah, but of course in H H4 you send your your factories. Or if you need it, you could also send the cannons. But I didn't, because Soldados. So Soldados basically hard counter everything he has. Except like these three Archivists here. And they are really powerful. And they won't stop anytime soon. I think I get them in 12 seconds each. And that's very good. So yeah, so I think this build order is a lot of fun. It's very potent. The soldados are surprisingly good. The haciendas also fit into the build order quite well. Um, I think I was ahead after I defended the first push, to be honest. And the marvelous here put me s so far ahead. Um, but the soldados really seal the deal, and they also seal the deal for closer um, games because what, al what always happens in 20-minute games is. The people will run out of hunts and out of natural resources and then you just start to make these soldados and you can oftentimes just finish it with the soldados. Yeah. That's basically the idea. Um, on this map this had a lot of hunts. On most maps the natural resources would be gone like five minutes earlier. So yeah, that's that basically. I think the soldados, as I said, are very good. Um, they also have more siege attack. And they just eat a lot of units. Um, and basically all you need in H4 is these soldados. And the factories on heavy cannons. Maybe some other cannons. And that carries you a long time until you fully transition to a sustainable economy I guess. So that's the build order for Soldados. It's one of my favorite build orders at the moment with Spain. Also the one I'm probably most successful with. So I would I can only advise to use this build order. I've I've got I've got great success. And I think it's fun. So yeah, what do you think about this build order? Let me know in the comments and if you tried also let me know how it went for you. And what you would do differently. Thanks for watching and see you guys around. Bye bye!